So just doing further experimentation with this gyro, I just wanted to address one of the points that was raised on my channel. And the question was asked that if it takes eight minutes to correct the error, surely the aeroplane is going to crash in that time. Well, what you have to remember is that I'm deliberately inducing gross errors just for the purpose of this experiment, just to demonstrate that the artificial horizon is capable of correcting itself back to level. The errors that you see in my experiment and later in this video in the time lapse are much more than you will ever experience in a normal flight. A normal instrument flight under the IFR rules where you are relying on the artificial horizon, it will be aligned perfectly before you take off. The pilot has to verify that it is aligned and then during flight it will never experience the gross errors that you see in the experimentation here. So there's never a situation where it will take eight minutes to correct the misalignment. That just doesn't happen. It stays aligned for the duration of the entire flight. And what you have to remember is that the artificial horizon is not the only instrument that we are relying on when flying the aircraft. We are constantly cross-referencing with the other flight instruments. You can see the artificial horizon here is at the top center. To the left we have the airspeed indicator. To the bottom left we have the turn coordinator which shows the rate of turn and also whether the aircraft is in balance. Directly underneath the artificial horizon we have the directional gyro. To the right is the altimeter and beneath the altimeter is the vertical speed indicator which shows the rate of climb and descent. So as we're flying the aircraft, referencing the attitude on the artificial horizon, we are constantly cross-referencing to the other instruments to confirm that they are all in agreement. And if there is any discrepancy, if there's any error forming in the artificial horizon, we can pick that up quite quickly just by referencing the indications on the other instruments. The turn coordinator, for example, will show the direction and rate of turn and the altimeter and the VSI will show us quite reliably whether we're climbing or descending. So the indications in the artificial horizon should match, but if they don't, we can discount that instrument altogether and use a technique called limited panel flying. Which is something that pilots actually train for. And you can see here that the artificial horizon and the directional indicator have been blacked out and I've actually got a set of rubber pads which just stick on top of the instrument when I was a flight instructor. So you can actually just block out any of those instruments and any pilot will tell you that uh, if they've done an instrument rating, they have to demonstrate competency in controlling the aircraft using a limited panel. Okay, now this is a, an example of a limited panel. You're limited in that you don't have the full six flight instruments. You've lost the artificial horizon you've lost the directional indicator, but using the remaining flight instruments, we are still capable of safely controlling the aircraft. So in the time-lapse part of this video, you'll see once again that the artificial horizon is successfully correcting itself to level. And what I did was induce more extreme errors than in my first video, just to show you that it is fully capable of correcting itself even from very large deviations. Now, what I did today was go out and purchase one of these 30 volt lab power supplies. So I can actually power the gyro using the correct voltage. And I also took the time to wire up the lighting circuit. So when we turn on the power, the gyro will run up to speed and you will also see the internal lighting in the circuit. So I'll just turn off the room light and when we turn on the gyro, you will see its internal illumination. So I've just turned off the light on the phone. Now I'll turn off the room light. And turning on the power. So you can see the illumination in the instrument itself is quite effective.
So you can see now that I'm operating at 27 volts and it's drawing just under half an amp and the off flag has disappeared fully. If I were to lower the voltage, drop it down to 24, you can see that the off flag reappears. If we put that voltage back up, the off flag disappears. So it needs a minimum voltage of about 25 volts to be functioning correctly. So we'll put that back up to 27. And now I'm going to just demonstrate a startup from a different attitude. So the gyroscope is unpowered now. You can see the off flag and there's no gyro sound. I've placed the case on its side. So it's now 90 degrees to its normal orientation. And what I'm going to do is apply power and you can see that the gyroscope will be aligning to level. The orientation of the case itself is not relevant to how the gyroscope will align because it's sensing the direction of gravity and it will align itself to the direction of gravity. So we'll turn on the power now. So the gyro is up to speed now and what I'm going to show you is that this unit is capable of holding its level even if the aircraft completed a 360 degree roll. So it's more capable than the vacuum driven gyros I was using in light aircraft years ago when I was learning to fly because if we did aerobatics with those gyros, if we did a roll, they would topple completely and be useless but this unit will actually hold level even if I rotate it 360 degrees. So it's quite a nice unit, just putting it back to the normal orientation there. And what we'll do now is just run the time lapse and you can see the unit once again making corrections from extreme errors, always correcting itself back to true level. So if you'd like more information about how the Electric Artificial Horizon does correct itself back to level, I can recommend this video which thanks to our good friend Walter, he posted a comment on my channel and contained a link to this video. It shows how the Electric Artificial Horizon does correct, how the correcting mechanisms work and I can highly recommend watching this video if you're interested in learning more. As I said, when I finish the testing on my own unit, I'm going to disassemble it and we can take a look inside at these correcting mechanisms ourselves.